Transformers, one of the most beloved properties out there, and something very special to me. So, I decided on this episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than Toku related. We're going to be doing something Transformers related. We're going to be discussing a certain fiasco with a certain character who has a few, well, two names. Today, we're going to be covering Jetfire slash Skyfire. Tired of losing battle after battle in the sky, the Autobots create the ultimate robot jet. Jetfire. Transformers. More than meets the eye. But the evil Decepticons have a secret new weapon. Shockwave. The Transformers. Robots in disguise. Transformers from Hasbro. During the second year of the Transformers, Hasbro decided that they would be importing more molds than just the stuff for Diaclone and Microman. So they decided to take some molds from other companies. They got Omega Supreme from Mechabot 1 from Toybox. Shockwave from the Astro Magnum, also from Toybox, which was sold in America under Radio Shack under a few separate names. And from Bandai, they got Roadbuster and Whirl from the Mugen Caliber line, as well as Jetfire from their Macross line. The main issue came from those last three. They were owned by Bandai, who at the time were Takara Tomy's rivals. This meant that the figures could not be distributed in Japan since Takara legally didn't have the right to distribute them and most likely wouldn't get the rights. This led to Jetfire being completely redesigned for the show so it could be aired in Japan, as well as getting a name change so he, so he didn't come across as false advertising for the toy. Interestingly, they kept the name Jetfire for the comics, but kept the show design. On the topic of the comics, despite the fact that Whirl and Roadbuster were not allowed to, to be in the actual show, um, they did appear in the Marvel comics and made regular appearances. In addition to that, Jetfire in the UK comics actually took the place of Prime for a while due to some other legal issues involving the moles for Prime's toy in Europe. Interestingly enough, there were actually recordings for the cartoon where Skyfire's name was replaced with Jetfire. They're probably online, you can probably look them up. As the franchise went on, Jetfire would get a few figures. Um, in 2006, he would get an install. He would get a figure in the Classics line, with the ability to switch between a more toy-accurate robot mode and a more cartoon-accurate robot mode. Whirl and Roadbuster weren't so lucky. Whirl would go on to be a generic name to be slapped onto helicopter repaints, and Roadbuster would go on to be a stockpile name that Hasbro would, Intercar would reuse just to keep the license to it, at one point going on to the literal worst character in the entirety of Transformers. However, come the franchise's 30th anniversary, things looked up for the Bandai Trio, with all three getting new figures. Jetfire, once again retaining his, his gimmick from classics. Roadbuster, getting a design based on his IDW design. And Whirl, getting a figure based on his original toy design. Whirl also received a smaller figure based on a um, based on Generations Vortex. Jetfire also received a figure a little later on in Hasbro's Cyber Battalion line, their resident Transformers budget line. And Roadbuster, much like Whirl, also received a smaller figure based on Generations Swindle. And later this year, Jetfire will be receiving a brand new figure in the Transformers Siege line. Jetfire's recent surge of new figures, as well as Roadbuster and World getting new figures, was due to a deal signed with Bandai that would allow Macross-like designs to be used in Transformers. Or at least that's how I or at least that's how I heard it was. There we go, a short, sweet video to fill in a little gap. So, yeah, and it was interesting. So, yeah, I guess I will see you guys next time. Bye!